Empirical provide compelling, interactive learning across a range of delivery options. Live on site, live online or online anytime, we have a training course that is ideal for you. For a no-obligations chat about your training requirements, contact us at empirical.com. This session is just going to look at some of the fundamentals behind circuit switch fallback. Now there's four main areas that we're going to cover, starting off with just some of the basic principles behind circuit switch fallback, before we then take a procedural level look at circuit switch fallback, including mobile originated calls, mobile terminated calls, and also some basic SMS procedures. But first of all, some of those key principles we're going to talk about the what, the where, the who and the how of circuit switch fallback. So first of all, what exactly is circuit switch fallback? Well, circuit switch fallback allows subscribers on a 4G network to essentially conduct voice procedures, voice call procedures or text procedures. Now, it's not as straightforward as that. There is a drawback because those subscribers who wish to make a voice call, for instance, will ultimately be required to fall back to 2G or 3G access. So they must leave the 4G network behind and conduct that call, whether it's mobile originated or mobile terminated, they must conduct the call in the 2G or 3G network. SMS is slightly different. In circuits which fall back, when we send an SMS, there is no requirement to fall back to 2G or 3G. In terms of where do we find circuit switch fallback, well, pretty much any LTE service provider who also runs a GRAN or UTRAN access network and voice core network will support circuit switch fallback. So it's deployed on a global basis very significantly. Who standardizes circuit switch fallback? It's the 3GPP. So circuit switch fallback is a separate specification as defined by the 3GPP. And in terms of how it works, well, to discuss that, we're going to look at the details of a mobile originated, mobile terminated call and also SMS. Now, for circuit switch fallback to actually work, I need to be attached to the 4G network and the 2G, 3G voice call network at the same time. And to achieve that, I need to conduct a combined attach. Now a combined attach is an LTE level procedure. So you would conduct a normal LTE 4G attach, but during that attach, I would also notify the 2G, 3G voice core that this user has attached to the network. Now that is achieved using the SGS interface, which is the link between the MME and the MSC server of the voice core. So once I've attached to the network, Subscriber information would be held in the MME and the MSC server and subscriber mobility related information would be held at the HSS and the HLR. Following this, I can conduct my call procedures. So we'll look at a circuit switch fallback mobile originated call and as you can see from the diagram, this subscriber has currently been attached to the 4G network and is live on the 4G network and you can see that a call is initiated by sending signaling to the MME. Now the MME will analyze that signaling, will realize that a circuit switch fallback call has been initiated, and what it will essentially do is instruct the E node B to release the subscriber. And at this point, the subscriber will be sent to 2G or 3G. Once they arrive in the 2G or 3G network, well, the call is just conducted as normal. So it will be a routine 2G or 3G mobile originated call procedure. And it's a very, very similar process when we look at a mobile terminated call. But this time with a mobile terminated call, the request for a call would actually arrive at the MSC server in the 2G, 3G voice call. So as you can see, that's arriving at the MSC server. Now because we've conducted a combined attach, this MSC server knows that the subscriber is currently on 4G. So rather than paging the 2G or 3G network, which is what it would normally do, 
Instead, it would page the MME. And it would instruct the MME, tell the MME, that a mobile terminated call is waiting in the 2G or 3G network. What this triggers is essentially the MME pages the mobile, the mobile responds to the paging message, and when we see that response coming up, once again, the MME will instruct the E node B to send that mobile subscriber to 2G or 3G. They arrive on 2G or 3G and then just conduct a regular mobile terminated call procedure. With respect to SMS, remember that there's no requirement to actually fall back to 2G or 3G access. When we send or indeed receive an SMS with circuit switch fallback, the SMS is transported across the 4G network using non-access stratum signaling and it gets from the 4G to the 2G or 3G voice core using the SGS interface. And that's the same regardless of whether it's a mobile originated or a mobile terminated text message. So just in summary, circuit switch fallback is a widely deployed mechanism which allows subscribers on 4G to essentially fall back to 2G or 3G and conduct a voice call. So when a circuit switch fallback call is indeed initiated, that would be the point at which that 4G device connected to the 4G network would need to move back to 2G or 3G access. For circuit switch fallback to work, however, we talked about the notion of the combined attached. The subscriber must be attached to the 4G network and the 2G, 3G voice call at the same time. And finally, sending an SMS does not require any kind of fallback mechanism to 2G or 3G. Need to know more? Why not visit our store where you can choose from over 200 hours of video-based training? Alternatively, you can contact us to discuss any specific training requirements you may have.